हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द कंटिन्यूएशन फॉर द प्रिपरेशन फॉर द सी पी सी बी साइंटिस्ट बी पोजिशन एज वेल एज फॉर द यू जी सी नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस और एनी अदर एनवायरमेंटल साइंस एंट्रेंसेस सो दिस वीडियो इज फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन ऑफ सी पी सी बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मेक श्योर यू आर हैविंग योर नोट्स सो दैट यू कैन नोट डाउन ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन विच विल बी डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो सो विदाउट मच डिले लेट स्टार्ट टू दिस वीडियो सो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द क्वेश्चन आई वुड लाइक टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट the successful candidates those who have given the correct answer in the this video where we had the environmental chemistry frequent last concept and the question was from the calculation of bod of the wastewater and here the correct option will be option b 2.09 g per liter and the correct answer was given by commented in the comment section by smita shri nikki minakshi and shreyans so well done guys so now let's start with today's video the first question is on your screen the question is which one of the following statements is not correct so always be cautious where it is written not correct and correct so here you should know the concept behind the pvc the dangerous chemical which are released when we are incinerating this pvc and all so we will know the correct statement first is option d will know dioxins and furans are amongst the most dangerous chemical agents yes they are known to be carcinogenic also and they can lead to impairment of immune endocrine nervous and reproductive system so these gases these chemicals are very dangerous and they are released when the chlorinated hydrocarbons like pvc polyvinyl chloride are incinerated but at a particular range these pvc they don't release this dioxin and furans so this question is asking about this thing only next we will know statement 1 is the presence of chlorinated hydrocarbons like pvc in the waste does not result in the release of dioxin and furan when the waste is incinerated at more than 1050 degrees celsius so some of you will be thinking if the temperature is more they will be released in more amount no here in this case it is not so it is correct statement yes if we are incinerating the waste more than 1050 degrees celsius then they are not released because high temperature incinerators note down they are designed to destroy such compounds yes under low temperature only when partial combustion takes place these dioxins and furans are released statement b states the presence of chlorinated hydrocarbons like pvc in the waste does not result in the release of dioxin and furan when the waste is incinerated at more than 950 degrees celsius also it is also correct statement when we are incinerating any waste which is having pvc presence of chlorinated hydrocarbons they won't release dioxin and furan when it is more than 950 2000 which is called as the safer temperature but statement c suggests that it states that the presence of chlorinated hydrocarbons like pvc in the waste does not result in the re release of dioxin and furan when the waste is incinerated at less than 850 degrees celsius it is incorrect yes this is the proper exact condition under which the furans and dioxins are formed so incomplete combustion takes place when we are incinerating these waste which are having pvc less than 850 degrees celsius if you are incinerating then it will be incomplete combustion and they will be released who will be released these dangerous chemical dioxin and furan so option c is the not correct statement i hope you have known the concept behind that more temperature more proper combustion so it is not releasing the dioxin and furan less temperature that is around 850 and less it will release these chemicals that are dangerous Let's move on to the next question. Question number seventeen. Seventeen also is asking which one of the following is not a correct statement about the vermi composting. We know vermi composting with the help of earthworm when we are making the compost, it is called as vermi compost. Here it is asking which is not a correct statement. So we will know which are correct statement first. During the passage through the worm's alimentary canal, it is going inside the earthworm. the organic matter is converted into simpler humus rich material due to the action of the enzymatic secretions and bacteria so when these worms they are taking the organic matter from the waste the waste the organic matter is converted into simpler humus rich material which are very helpful for the plant growth that's why we are using these worms and they are giving us the vermi compost due to the action of enzymatic secretion and bacteria presents in the worms elementary canal it is a correct statement 
for the vermicomposition. Next is, it is a relatively faster process and takes about 24 hours to complete. Is it correct? No, not at all. It takes several weeks, usually six to eight weeks. So it takes to form the complete vermicomposting from 45 to 60 days around approximately, not just in 24 hours, it will give the vermicompost. We will put the earthworm, put the compost, put the waste and we will get the vermicompost. It is not the case. So this statement is not correct. We have known, but which are correct also we should know to clear our concept. Only deep burrowing earthworms are useful composters. Surface dwellers are not preferred. Yes, not preferred because if they will burrow deep inside the waste, so this is waste, if they will go inside the waste, these earthworms, let us imagine these are earthworms, then only they can have more food for them, they will utilize them and with the enzymatic action, they will make it into humus rich material. So deep burrowing earthworms are preferred, not the surface dwellers. Surface dwellers means those will be on the surface of the waste. I hope you are clear. Let's know the last statement which is also correct because we have known that this is incorrect statement. Most suitable species for vermicomposting are Eucina fetida and Eudrilus euginae. I repeat, Eucina fetida, Eudrilus euginae are the most suitable species for the vermicomposition. Let's move on to the next question, question number 18 which we already did in the last video. If you haven't checked the previous video, the playlist in the i button and description is very important. You must go through them because questions will be coming from there. Coming to the next question, question 19 is a numerical. Conversion of unit, we'll know in the next video. As I already told, numericals will be having a separate video. Question 20, yes. Question 20 is methanogens and sulfate reducing bacteria. In short, they are called as SRB. They utilize the acetic acid as common substrate in an anaerobic digester where the oxygen supply is not given. So these bacteria, they are SRB, sulfate reducing bacteria and methanogens. They utilize the acetic acid which is used in and aerobic digesters. From here also you will be getting the concept. These are used in anaerobic condition. They utilize the acidic acid, acetic acid which is given a substrate. Next coming to the question, the dominance of methanogens over SRB that is sulfate reducing bacteria in the anaerobic digester can be achieved by one or more of which of the following options. So it is telling when in which case the methanogen will be dominating and SRB, sulfate reducing bacteria, will be in not dominant stage. They, how it will be achieved? Here it is given as per the ratio. Which ratio we have to maintain high or low? So I will tell you the answer. I will not waste much of your time. Here the correct option will be option number D. Maintaining very uh, high COD by sulfate ratio. So here sulfate ratio means what happens is if sulfate ratio, what happens here to suppress the SRB? sulfate reducing bacteria they will use the sulfate and so here when sulfate ratio is low that means they will not get the sulfate to reduce the sulfate reducing bacteria because it is in denominator COD will more so if COD is more then methanogens will be active and their dominance will be there and here sulfate will be less so in all other cases if we see here maintaining very low COD by SO4 2 minus. So in this case, it will be beneficial for the SRB. So we cannot go for this. And as it has given sulfate reducing bacteria, so in other options, there is no such place for sulfate in A or C. Where sulfate is given, there it should be very high in the numerator, less in the denominator because denominator is sulfate and sulfate is used by the sulfate reducing bacteria. So we have to reduce them. We don't give dominance to them, we have to give dominance to methanogen as per the question. So option D will be the correct option. I hope you are clear now. If you are having any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Coming to the next question, question 21. For most of you, it will be a new question, a new scientist name coming up. Winogradsky column, WC is a model ecosystem used for studying aquatic and sediment microorganism. Note down, WC, Winogradsky column, is a model ecosystem used for studying aquatic and sediment microorganism and it is asking which one of the following material is suitable for making a cylindrical container that will serve the purpose of preparing a world cup not world cup Winogradsky column so here 
what will be the correct option if you know what is Vinograd's key column and how it is used then only you can answer so let us see so this picture says a it is giving the overall thing where water is on top and mud with uh, magnesium sulfate calcium sulfate is there along with the fragments of paper or plants it is put with and after some time in the incubation as you can see in the arrow it will change into different layers and we will be able to study the aquatic and sediment microorganism water soil all the microorganism study we can do with this thing very simple thing and you can see on top of that it will be having holes for the exchange of air yes these organisms also should uh, breathe and they should also respire for them there should be holes and this container as you can see after incubation what will happen on top because of oxygen is reducing down on top the oxygen will be more cyanobacteria will be more next it is the colorless sulfur oxidizing bacteria will be on top examples are bagiota and thiobacillus bagiota thiobacillus are the example of colorless sulfur oxidizing bacteria which are on the top of this Vinogradsky column next phototropic purple non-sulfur bacteria yes purple non-sulfur bacteria example rhodospirillum rhodobacter they will be on the second strata or second layer of this wc column next coming to the phototropic purple sulfur bacteria which are bacteria, chromatium theocapsa next chlorotropic green sulfur bacteria sorry phototropic green sulfur bacteria example is chlorobium and at the bottom with them you can see there is h2s present here so here in the black color that is the zone for fermentative bacteria for example clostridium also sulfate reducing bacteria for example d sulfo vibrio so this image i will also put it in our telegram page for your convenience if you're not there you can join there we are connecting daily quizzes there for your stronger preparation so here as you can see in this picture to analyze them to see the layers the material should be what it should be transparent it should not be opaque so in the options as you can see here it is given mud stainless steel glass or wood so very simple if you know what is this Vinogradsky column you will hit option C glass in order to view all these things clearly and you will get the full marks so glass will be the correct option that material will use to prepare cylindrical Vinogradsky column coming to the next question next question from mineral so here it is which one or more of the following combination of mineral names and their corresponding chemical formula is or are correct yes we'll know one by one first is kaolinite kaolinite formula it is given al2si2o5 oh whole 4 yes it is correct you should remember that gypsum formula let us see cso4.2h2o we all know it is also correct it is asking which one or more of the following combinations are correct so a is correct in our part coming to the b here you can see kaolinite is given as cocco3.mgco3 it is not correct because we know kaolinite is al2si2o5 oh whole 4 gypsum is correct but kaolinite is not correct so this this statement this formula this part is not correct next is dolomite dolomite what is the formula dolomite formula is what dolomite is camg co3 whole 2 yes camg co3 whole 2 co3 whole 2 will be the i will write it down dolomite c a m g c o 3 whole 2 is the formula for dolomite but here it is given al2 si2 o5 which is not at all correct it is not correct gypsum it is correct no gypsum is also not correct because gypsum is CSO4.2H2. Now coming to the kaolinite. Yes, it is correct. We all know Al2SI2O5 OH whole 4. Dolomite CSO3.MgCO3. Is it correct? It is also the same. Yes. Because here you can see here. Yes, CO3, CO3 they have written twice. But in the formula we know CO3 whole 2 we can do. So it is also correct. So A and D are correct. So which option will be correct? Our correct option will be option number a and d are correct for us i hope you are noting down all these things let's move on to the next question next we will do question number 24 greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorb what what they absorb very simple and basic question they observe long wave radiation and warms our atmosphere option b will be the correct option coming to the next question question 25 
excess amount of oxygen is maintained in the aeration tank of the activated sludge process to what? To what? For doing what purpose? Excess amount of oxygen is maintained in the aeration tank of the activated sludge. Which one or more of the following option is correct? So we'll read one by one here. First statement in order to reduce the generation of highly potent greenhouse gases. Is it correct? Yes, it is absolutely correct. It reduces also methane by N2O formation, which are the potent greenhouse gases. Because of addition of oxygen, it reduces the formation of methane and N2O. Next is it allow better phosphate removal? No, it does not allow phosphate removal. C is allows the growth of nocardia species? No, ensures efficient nitrification. Yes, it ensures efficient nitrification. Nitrification, we all know. If you don't know, nitrogen cycle is very important for any of the environmental science entrance examination. We have a separate video, brief and very, very important before going for the exam. You should watch that. I'll provide the link in the i button as well as in the description below. So here option A and D are correct because these are the reasons we add oxygen to maintain the aeration tank. Let's move on to the next question. Next question, question number 26 on your screen. If in its simplest form, photochemical smoke formation can be explained as follows. How? P plus Q plus sunlight gives photochemical smoke. What are the precursors P and Q respectively? So here, what are these P and Q? You have to tell me. Think and I will tell you the answer. I know you have known now. So here, P is, it can be volatile organic compound. And Q can be what? Oxides of nitrogen. So option A will be correct. When volatile organic compound and oxides of nitrogen, they combine with sunlight, they will give what? They form ozone and other oxidants and then photochemical smoke formation is there. So I hope you have learned something new from here and you have noted down all these things. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon to get all further updates. See you guys in our next video. Till then, keep smiling and believe in yourself.